When you're talking Ford, you're talking Coons. Tonight, breaking news, an ambulance turned into a weapon of mass destruction. The horrific terror attack, the chaos in Kabul, the new cycle of violence with more U.S. troops on the way. Also breaking tonight, Wynn Folds, casino mogul Steve Wynn resigning as a Republican finance chair after accusations he pressured women into sex acts. Will GOP lawmakers now return the millions he gave them? Culture of abuse? First, Larry Nasser. Now, new questions about other victims and a possible cover-up at Michigan State University. Claims of sexual abuse by players on the men's football and basketball teams. A special prosecutor now investigating. Plus, the billionaire couple found hanged in their home. Their deaths first thought to be a suicide, now being investigated as murder. And buried alive, the snowboarder and this dangerous jump. Coming. Coming. The race to rescue him from under the snow. From ABC News, this is ABC World News Tonight. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Tom Yamas, and we begin with that breaking news from Afghanistan. A devastating terror attack in the capital. An ambulance made to help the sick and the injured turned into a killing machine. People running in panic when the suicide car bomb went off in an area crowded with offices and shops. The blast causing massive damage, mangled pieces of buildings, as you can see, and cars blocking the street. The staggering toll, 95 dead, 158 injured. An official at a nearby hospital flooded with victims, calling it a massacre. The pace of terror attacks in Afghanistan picking up, this one claimed by the Taliban. And with the U.S. war, they're now in its 17th year. More American troops are about to arrive. ABC senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel starts us off. Chaos in Kabul after a suicide bomber driving an ambulance detonates on a packed street in the Afghan capital, killing at least 95. <laughs> Panic as people flee the glass and debris from the surrounding buildings. Many racked with grief. This man losing his son in the blast. According to the Interior Ministry, a man told police he was taking a patient to the hospital before setting off the ambulance filled with explosives at a checkpoint. We were eating lunch. Suddenly huge explosions occurred, this shopkeeper said. More than 150 were injured in the attack near foreign embassies. The leader of CENTCOM was close by, but not hurt. I saw pieces of a vehicle on the road. It also created a crater on the road. The incident happened five meters away from my car. This has become a familiar scene. Paramedics and bystanders desperately trying to save who they can. Getting people to hospital by any means. Ambulances ferrying the wounded, many limping to safety and assistance. Local hospitals have seen many days like this. Even so, they're overwhelmed with patients, many being triaged at the blast site. Some not even making it into the building. The Taliban said they carried out the attack, their second in a week. Last Saturday, storming a major hotel at dinner time, going floor by floor. Hotel guests using bedsheets to try and escape. 22 were killed, including four Americans in that attack. And Ian Panel, who has done extensive reporting in Afghanistan, joins us live. Ian, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, said earlier this month the Taliban are moving closer to peace talks and, quote, U.S. policy on Afghanistan is working. Yeah, that's right, Tom. I've heard these claims repeatedly over the years, and sadly, they're just not borne out by the facts on the ground. And let's just look at it. You've got more U.S. troops coming in, another bloody fighting season beckons, and now the third major attack this year. It certainly doesn't look like success. Tom? Ian Panel with some perspective on that cycle of violence out of Afghanistan. Ian, thank you. Next, breaking news from the political world. Tonight, Las Vegas casino mogul Steve Wynn resigning as finance chairman of the Republican National Committee after facing accusations that he pressured women into sex acts. Wynn is also one of the party's biggest donors. So will the GOP candidates and lawmakers return the millions in contributions he gave them? ABC's Kenneth Moten from Washington tonight. Tonight, casino mogul Steve Wynn has stepped down as the finance chair for the Republican National Committee in the wake of sexual misconduct allegations. Steve Wynn, would you stand up? He's raising so much money for our great Republican Party. The fallout from a Wall Street Journal report that the 76-year-old billionaire whom President Trump has called a good friend 
allegedly pressured employees to perform sex acts over several decades. The Journal reporting a 2005 incident, a manicurist at Wynn's Las Vegas resort alleged he forced her to have sex in his office suite, later paying her a $7.5 million settlement. ex win salon manager Jorgen Nilsson told ABC News he saw employees cry, get sick, and have nervous breakdowns when Wynn requested them. He was actually chasing one of the manicures around, and she locked herself in the bed, and it would not come up. Wynn calling the allegations preposterous, saying we find ourselves in a world where people can make allegations regardless of the truth. I'm Steve Wynn. And this is my new hotel. Wynn's fortune, worth an estimated $3.5 billion. His name, prominent on the Vegas Strip, which he helped transform building several casinos. Tonight, increasing calls for the Republican Party to return Wynn's donations. RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel vocal months ago when the Harvey Weinstein sexual misconduct allegations surfaced, tweeting, if the DNC truly stands up for women, then returning Weinstein's dirty money should be a no-brainer. The RNC silent about the money Wynn raised for the party. And Kenneth Moten joins us live outside RNC headquarters in Washington. Kenneth, Steve Wynn today addressed his resignation, calling the allegations against him a distraction. That's right, Tom. Wynn also touted the work he's done for the Republican Party and thanked President Trump. Tonight, Wynn is speaking out, but the RNC here and many of the GOP lawmakers he raised money for, quiet about those donations. Tom? Kenneth Moten for us tonight. Kenneth, thank you. Next, Democrats calling for legislation to protect special counsel Robert Mueller after those reports that President Trump tried to fire him last June. The president consistently denying it, yesterday calling it fake news. But tonight, even a top Senate Republican says he's open to a move to protect Mueller's independence. ABC's David Wright is at the White House tonight. Tonight, fresh from his quick trip to Davos. Uh, I think it was a very, very successful trip. The president is gearing up for the State of the Union, a speech the White House describes as optimistic, forward-looking, and bipartisan. President Trump eager to take credit for a roaring economy. Mr. Speaker, the president of the United States. This may be his first State of the Union, but it's a format Trump has already shown he can master. His address last year to a joint session of Congress won high marks. The time for small thinking is over. The time for trivial fights is behind us. But this year's speech comes in the shadow of the ongoing Russia investigation, including bombshell reports that Trump tried to fire the special counsel last summer. Trump denied it at the time. I haven't given it any thought. But his close friend Chris Ruddy was convinced. I think he's considering um, perhaps terminating uh, the special counsel. According to the New York Times, Trump only relented when White House counsel Don McGahn threatened to quit. Fake news, folks. Fake news. What's your message? Typical New York Times fake stories. Members of Congress are taking no chances. Democrats renewing their efforts to shield the special counsel from being fired. My hope is that more people will stand up, protect Mueller, protect his investigation. Even the Republican chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Iowa's Chuck Grassley, says he's open to the idea. All right, David Wright joins us live from the White House. David, I want to turn out of the State of the Union speech. As they continue to craft that speech, what else are you hearing about what the president may say? Well, Tom, the White House says the speech is going to focus on five main areas, broadly speaking, the economy, infrastructure, immigration, trade, and national security. And the president's hoping to make the case that under his leadership, all groups have benefited. Tom? We all look forward to that speech. All right, David, thank you. Hillary Clinton under scrutiny tonight for her handling of a claim of sexual harassment by a staff member. The New York Times reporting that Bern Strider, a 2008 campaign advisor, was accused of sexually harassing a young staffer and that her campaign manager, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager, recommended that she fire him. Instead, Clinton docked his pay, ordered him to get counseling, and she gave the young woman a new job. Strider recently tweeting this photo with her celebrating International Women's Day. Clinton now responding to the incident, tweeting, I was dismayed when it occurred, but it, was, but it was heartened the young woman came forward, was heard, and her concerns taken seriously and addressed. Next to that breaking news from Michigan State University, after the sentencing of former sports doctor Larry Nasser, new questions about claims of sexual abuse by players on the school's football and basketball teams. And tonight, a special prosecutor now appointed to investigate. Here's ABC's Eva Pilgrim.
Michigan State, at the center of one of the worst sexual abuse scandals in the country, now facing new questions. A special prosecutor investigating. No individual and no department at Michigan State University is off limits. The latest bombshell, an ESPN outside the lines investigation found a sexually hostile environment inside the men's basketball and football programs. Any accusations of my handling of any complaints of sexual assault individually are completely false. But ESPN reporting that the university's handling of those cases shows a pattern of widespread denial, inaction, and information suppression. Overnight, hundreds of students dressed in teal calling for change. Earlier this week, more than 150 female athletes spoke at the sentencing hearing for Larry Nasser, the former U.S. gymnastics team doctor who also worked at the university. He betrayed my trust took advantage of my youth and sexually abused me hundreds of times. The MSU athletic director stepping down. The university's president resigned. Some of Nasser's victims say university employees knew about the abuse. They literally took reports of sexual assault and stuffed them in a file cabinet. The women say they think Nasser's victims could be in the thousands. They are calling on the Olympic Committee to do a full independent investigation. Tom? Eva Pilgrim for us tonight. Eva, thank you. We turn now to the new clues in the case of a prominent billionaire couple found dead in the basement of their mansion. The high-profile killings rocking Canada, with Toronto police now saying it appears to be a double homicide. Here's ABC's Ariel Reshef. Tonight, the mystery deepening behind the double homicide of one of the world's richest couples. I believe in the six weeks of review of the evidence that we've retained that they were targeted. For the first time, authorities now saying publicly billionaires Honey and Barry Sherman were sought out and slain in their home. The two found hanged on the pool level of their sprawling $7 million mansion. The cause of death for both Shermans was ligature neck compression. Police revealing there was no forced entry to the property. The bodies reportedly discovered in December by a real estate agent preparing for an open house. Authorities keeping a tight lid on any leads. We haven't developed any suspects. People are outstanding for or a person is outstanding for this offense. And tonight, detectives still combing through a mountain of evidence. More than 120 witness statements, roughly 2,000 hours of surveillance footage. Two residential properties belonging to the Shermans have been searched. The primary Sherman residence is a three-story family dwelling of a size warranting six weeks of searching. Barry Sherman amassing a multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical empire. Police now piecing together who would want him and his wife dead. Tom, we reached out to the Toronto Police Department. They are not mentioning any possible motive, but they say there is still an extensive list of people they want to speak with. Tom. The mystery deepening tonight. All right, Ariel, thank you. Turning now to the weather and the January thaw warming the northeast tonight. Those milder conditions raising concerns about flooding. Take a look at the ice jams there in Pennsylvania and heavy rains triggering some flash flooding along the central Gulf Coast. ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano joins us now and New Orleans is in the bullseye now that's soaking. Yeah, but they've been getting rain all day and Baton Rouge is the wettest day in over a year, Tom. Check out the radar still coming down in those areas, but it's moving a little bit farther east down I-10 through Biloxi Mobile. It'll stretch out across uh, the Panhandle, Georgia, the Carolinas and getting up into the northeast across those those swollen rivers as well. Couple that with the mild air, as you mentioned, likely going to see more in the way of ice jam flooding, especially across some of the lower rivers, the Housatonic and the Delaware, notably. And then we'll cool it down on Monday, potentially some light snow for the to start off the work week, but another mild day tomorrow, Tom. All right, we'll take it, Rob. Thank you. Still ahead on World News tonight this Saturday, the deadly flu update, and the one thing doctors say you may want to have on hand in short supply in some places tonight. Plus, the major change coming to air travel, airlines cracking down on owners who falsely claim their pets. Our emotional support animals. The Noah's Ark of animals we found clear to fly. And we'll take you to the bottom of the sea for a real life treasure hunt, gold coins. But from where and how much is it worth? Coming up. This is ABC World News Tonight, brought to you by Progressive. Friends, colleagues, gathered here are the world's finest insurance experts. Rodney, mastermind of discounts like Safe Driver, Paperless, the list goes on. How about a discount for long list? Gold. Mara, you save our customers hundreds for switching almost effortlessly. It's a gift. And Jamie. Present. Together, we are unstoppable. So, what are we gonna do? Insurance. That's 
kind of what we do here.